The winner of this game gets to take on the 18 and 0 New England Patriots coming up in Super Bowl 42 in Glendale Arizona one degree below zero wind chill of minus 23 degrees on a full moon night here in Green Bay Wisconsin just so you know it's 63 degrees in Glendale Arizona right now <laughs> well that's where one or both these teams are hoping to get to we already know the one that's going out of the AFC they had their hands full today with the San Diego Chargers but congratulations to the 18 and 0 New England Patriots as Corin Robinson waits for the kick from times. These big linemen who will not wear sleeves during this game they will have their bare arms exposed. Can't imagine what that feels like down on the field minus 23 wind chill and the ball was knocked off the tee by the wind. So some unlucky soul may have to put their finger on it and hold it for Lawrence Tynes. Well and already I mean that gives you a pretty good indication as to how the wind is going to affect this ball game. You know last week yes it snowed here but there was very little wind it was about 30 degrees was not a factor in terms of throwing the football the fact that they've got to get Corey Webster over here to hold it. I mean tells you all you need to know with what we're dealing with here today. High short kick on a bounce it's Corin Robinson. He makes it to the 25 they'll give him the 25 and a half and we go down to the field as they scuffle after the kick return. Here's Pam Oliver. Well Joe it's one thing to anticipate the cold it's another thing when it smacks you right upside the head as it did with some New York Giants when they first came out to warm up. Plexico Burris absolutely taken aback by the cold some air got inside of his glove. He said I can't feel my hand. But hopefully by the end of the game he'll be able to get that straightened out. Meantime to talk about some unusual advice some unsolicited advice about how to stay warm. Rookie tight end Kevin Boss his aunt called him from Michigan said try some cayenne pepper in your shoe. I heard that works. Back to you. <laughs> whatever works whatever is worth trying they will A blitz from the Giants on first down and they drop it off to the fullback. Corey Hall has got a first down for Green Bay as he picks up 12. Jabril Wilson on the tackle for the Giants a nice safe throw for Favre to start his night. Yeah Green Bay starts out in what they call Falcon formation that means they've got both fullbacks in the game it's a balanced offensive set and as you see it's a running personnel package but they come off of that showing run and then they run the boot out the backside. Play action. Favre, two for two. Hits his tight end. That's Bubba Franks for 11. This is an offensive line that has settled in for the Green Bay Packers. And during the season allowed just 19 sacks. That was the third fewest across the NFL. And they are very good Troy out at the tackle spot with Tauscher and Clifton and they'll have their hands full tonight. Yeah they've got their hands full but because they are so good at those two positions they can give help with their running backs in pass protection inside. Here's the first of the day by the former giant Ryan Grant who takes it to midfield. A two yard carry Justin Tuck on the tackle Tuck a guy who was just rewarded with a five year thirty million dollar contract and he's a guy who can rush off the edge or come from the inside defensively and we look at this secondary Troy and that's where they are banged up and have some holes. Yeah Aaron Ross who will be wearing a shoulder harness he dislocated it twice last week in the game against the Cowboys. Showing some toughness playing here tonight. Off his back foot down the field and nearly picked off by Wilson. Greg Jennings, the intended receiver, as far as let the first deep pass of the night fly, and it's third and eight. Yeah, he had a shot that if he had been able to get the ball up just a little bit sooner, you had Jennings, who was open, but 
Jabril Wilson who has been playing outstanding. You go back to last week I mean this guy was all over the field looked like he might have had a chance at that one and he has great range from that safety position and he showed it there. Third down Green Bay. Favre throws and out of the reach of Donald Driver. And after a couple of first downs and after getting to midfield the Giants defense holds and we will talk a lot as this game progresses about the job done by Steve Spagnolo, the first year defensive coordinator of the Giants but what he has done with his defense and molding it after giving up 90 points the first two weeks of the season has been nothing short of remarkable and I know he was disappointed in himself for not being more aggressive early last week expect a little more pressure in this one in the first half McQuarters with a fair catch after the Ryan punt of in NFL history the three coldest games tonight number three the ice bowl in 67 San Diego at Cincinnati which they called the freezer bowl they clocked it at minus 59 wind chill that night. And we started tonight at minus one as Brandon Jacobs runs into literally Charles Woodson tried to run over him and a gain of four and these are two cornerbacks that will come off the edge Troy and make a tackle Woodson and Al Harris. Well, there's no question. I mean it's a physical corner group and Charles Woodson I don't know how many more times he's going to want to have to try to do that. I mean you're talking about a 265 pounder running downhill. I mean there's a lot of corners in this league that would have gone down low. I mean my hat's off to Charles Woodson taking him up high. Second and six for Eli who sets up and throws completes to Plexico Burris and with forward progress it's good for a first down. Al Harris on the stop and they'll be matched up all night long despite missing the one start in the playoffs as Sean O'Hara did at Tampa Bay. It's been an offensive line that's been healthy. Mackenzie Booling with a bad ankle. And Kevin Boss gets the start now these days after the Giants lost Shockey in the middle of December. First down, New York. Play action from Manning who throws to an empty spot. Amani Toomer had taken off. Manning thought he was going to pull up second and ten and this defense for Green Bay Troy ended up 11th ranked across the NFL and they have bigger linebackers which will help them deal with that big 260 plus pound back Brandon Jacobs. Well I think when you look at this Packers defense I mean they you know they don't get talked about a lot but it's a good front seven they're pretty stout in the middle. You know, they got Ryan Pickett back last week did a great job against that Seattle running game. Second down and ten and Jacobs runs into Papinga. Third and ten. You know Green Bay defensively even though they're stout in the middle at the linebacker position they run extremely well and this is where they like to get offenses they want to get them into third and long they bring Kabir Bajabia Miller in off the edge they got Aaron Campman on the other side it's a challenge for these offensive tackles Manning fires to Burris first down and more he gets across the forty five. Harris on the near the 47 and 18 yard completion and two so far to Plexico Burris. Yeah, you can see right there normally Al Harris he likes to challenge the receiver he wants to get his hands on him but he did not this time with Plexico Burris Plexico runs the slant gets a pretty good release and then Eli Manning makes a good throw and I think that you know from what we've seen so far whether it's with Brett Favre on the bootlegs or Eli Manning you know those are the throws that are going to be the most effective the balls that are traveling no more than 10 yards. Handoff is to Jacobs gets to the edge and a good play by A.J. Hawk to come off his block after a gain of three by Jacobs. You know we we talked to Mike McCarthy who's the head coach of the Packers and he did utter the phrase we want to make the quarterback 
beat us. And despite the last three games where Eli Manning has turned this imaginary corner, as good as those games have been, these coaches and coordinators still want to see it. And at some point, if they load up against the run all night long, Eli Manning's going to have to drop back and beat them. Yeah, and I think even if you look at last week, Joe, I know he only had 12 completions, but they were big completions at critical times in that game that allowed them to score points and then ultimately win. Pass is complete. That's Amani Toomer, and he is wrapped up near the first down marker. Looks to be a hair short, a completion of six yards. And it appears to be third and short coming up. It is. And you look at this throw here. I mean, these are the things that Eli Manning has been doing an excellent job of. He shades the receiver to the outside with the ball. He had help on the inside with Al Harris, knowing that if he put it to the outside there on Amani Toomer, they've got the chance for the completion. That's really what he's been doing, you know, here over the last three weeks. He's been very good at ball placement. Third down and one. Corey Williams came across. Was he drawn off? If he wasn't, it's a first down for the Giants. Encroachment. Defense. Number 99. Five yard penalty. First down. And I, you know Corey Williams adheres to that philosophy that if you're going to go early you might as well knock someone on their rear end because he didn't he, he didn't let up did he he was right here in the middle he can the center that's Sean O'Hara who was accused by Aaron Campman and others of playing dirty when these two teams met in week two at the Meadowlands a game that was won handily by the Green Bay Packers. On first down, Manning throws and completes another one for Plexico Burris. And he dives forward for a first down. You know, when we talk about Green Bay and the way in which they want to play these wide receivers up close, one of the ways you keep them from getting the jam is you put your receiver in motion. Then you get a free release, as you're going to see. He's going against Charles Woodson here. By going in motion, not only does he not get the jam, but then Al Harris was not in man coverage. Charles Woodson went with him, and it was an easy completion. Terrific opening possession for this Giants offense. Ninth play of the drive. Jacobs off the right side. Aaron Campman on the tackle, a gain of three. Yeah, I'm a little surprised when you, you know, look at these quarterbacks both Eli Manning and Brett Favre neither one of them have ever worn a glove on their throwing hand and I know going out there earlier tonight I mean my hand was numb within 10 minutes I think that's the challenge is really trying to keep the hand warm but you know, so far at least for Eli Manning he's throwing the ball pretty effectively seems like he's putting it where he wants to put it he does have a glove on his left hand and it's the first time that he's ever done that. Second and seven. Manning over the middle completes another. Another first down, and this time it's Kevin Boss for 11 yards, and Manning has started red hot on a freezing night. And I know that in the time that Kevin Boss has started playing in place of the injured Jeremy Shockey, I mean, Eli Manning and Kevin Boss just seem to have a real good connection between the two of them. I mean, he, he sees what's happening, he knows where to go with the ball with him, and you know, we came in, you mentioned it, Joe, talking about cheap shots, a lot of taunting, a lot of discussion going on between these two teams. It's already begun. Brandon Jacobs brought down by Papinga. No gain. You know, I know if uh, last week, and really even the Tampa Bay game, you know, the Giants. They have not even gotten 300 yards of total offense yet in either one of the playoff games. But what they've done a great job of is they've not turned the ball over. And then more importantly, they scored when they've gotten down here in the red zone. That's really been the difference in their ball games. It certainly was last week against Denver. Last three games, 10 drives in the red zone. They've come away with nine touchdowns. As you say, and they would love to get in here to start this night offensively as Manning. 
Buy some time. Throws for the end zone incomplete. Big B on the coverage of Kevin Boss. And now it's third down and ten. You know, Toomer over the last four ball games or so for the Giants, I mean, he has really come on. That knee that he had surgically repaired has gotten more stronger for him, and he's been very, very effective. That's where Eli Manning was one to go first. Was not able to get the ball into him, and then comes back to Kevin Boss. Kevin Boss, such a big target. You know, the guy's six seven, moves well. See the play clock on the Fox box down to four, three. Manning just gets it away on third down in trouble, and he threw it right into the gut of Cullen Jenkins. Fourth down. And big Cullen, 6'2, 303, almost came away with a pick. Yeah, they go with a zone dog, and that's why Cullen Jenkins was dropping back into coverage. He's going to try to take away anything underneath. You know, Eli does not see him trying to get the ball out, and then Cullen Jenkins had a chance. Yeah, that would have, that would have been a pretty good catch for a big man if he had brought that one in. Well, nothing is a given. A 29 yard try here by Lawrence Tynes. They've had some issues with the center. Alfred, a good snap. Good hold by Fiegels, and the Giants get the first points of the night. Well, that's Brett Favre all bundled up, getting ready to go back out there. The Giants had five first downs on their first drive. Eli Manning starts five for eight, 54 yards, and Tynes hits from 29 yards out. Three nothing visitors. Giants scored first last week on that 52 yard touchdown to Amani Tumor. This is Corner Robinson. And now tonight, January 20, 2008, third coldest game in NFL history. Pass complete to Corin Robinson, and he is tackled well out there by Jabril Wilson. The first time the Packers had the ball, they threw it four times, ran it only once. And by the way, as we go through then and now, I think people around the country are under the impression that this is a stadium that's been here since the early 1900s. They first built on this site in 57, renamed it Lambeau Field in 65, when Curly Lambeau, the founder of this franchise and longtime coach, passed away. If there isn't a better venue in all of sports than this one right here, second and nine. A little flip, a shovel pass to Grant, who's brought down immediately by this good front, Justin Tuck and Michael Strahan, a loss of three. Yeah, both those guys rushing the passer, Tuck and Strahan, and you see they come in. Here's Tuck right here. And he's able to get some pressure and just collapse it, and then you've got Ryan Grant going right to where he was and got sandwiched between him and Michael Strahan. Tough down in distance for Green Bay, third and 12. Out of the shotgun, Corin Robinson again, hoping he can make a move, and he cannot. Corey Webster out there to make the stop. Wilson was there to help. No gain, and it's three and out for the Packers offense. That's a good job right there by the Giants defensively on that third down. Whenever they get a team into third and long, that's when they like to bring some pressure. They brought the blitz off the edge, forced Brett Favre to get the ball out. Most importantly, both with Jabril Wilson and there on that last play, they do a good job of tackling receivers in the open field. That's been one of the things they've done exceptionally well here over the last couple of games. R.W. McCorders calls for a fair catch and then lets it go. And it will roll out down to minus two as we continue. 240 left in the first quarter. Ball at the 40. Good starting field position for the Giants who lead by three. Manning with plenty of time throws and it's dropped by Amani Toomer. Wide open and Toomer can't bring it in. Second and ten. 
This offensive line for the Giants really has done a good job here in the early going of giving Eli Manning good protection had a pretty good pocket got hit late. But you saw Charles Woodson slipped and Amani Toomer you know as good as he has been here over the last couple of weeks you know he has dropped more balls this year than I've seen him drop at any other time during his career. This was a Giants team that led the NFL with 42 drops on the season. That's only their second drop this postseason. Brandon Jacobs goes nowhere. A.J. Hawk the first one there third down and ten coming up. Third down and ten. And now the Giants go to an empty backfield of their own. Jacobs started the play split out wide to the right has one blocker in front of him but the play is clamped down before he can get ten picked up seven it's fourth down Termon Williams on the tackle for Green Bay. I'll tell you what Joe I am surprised to be quite honest with you that both teams have really come out throwing the football the way that they have I, I just did not anticipate either quarterback you know being that effective throwing the ball there's still obviously a lot of football left to play but you know, I felt that these offensive coordinators have come into this game and say hey let's run it let's just try to get something going on the ground but both of them have really taken the other approach. Green Bay's had the ball twice have run it only once. Ugly punt by Fiegels. It goes basically nowhere. Fifty nine seconds left in this first quarter. Man and his friend here at the game in Lambeau whatever can try and keep you warm it's almost a losing battle however you try and do it on a night like this see if the Packers can get anything going offensively they go to the ground here as Ryan Grant gets it and Grant is good for a three yard gain over the right side Wilson on the tackle and we go down to Chris Myers Joe in pregame warm ups Brett Favre who never wears a glove in a game tried one on his left hand and he said I'd like to in a game but I'm not comfortable so I'd rather be cold than uncomfortable he's heating his hands with hand warmers in his pockets but he said as the night goes on and the ball gets colder it affects your grip and it takes some yardage off especially the deep throws. All right Chris second down and seven. Just getting the snap on a night like this. Well, the ball snapping into those cold hands can't be fun as Ryan Grant takes it across the 35, picks up two. A little more manageable third down coming up for the Packers. You know, that interests me, that Joe, though, that that Favre is uncomfortable with a glove on his left hand. I, I know, you know, we just got through saying that Eli Manning's never worn one on his left hand. Members of that defense over by those big heaters during the break second quarter gets underway it's third down and five for Green Bay. Favre throws completes the ball is dropped and now they'll say incomplete in the hands of James Jones had it didn't secure it all the way. And got a hit from Aaron Ross. Well, I'll tell you right now, I, I think Steve Spagnola, the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, is doing a good job. I mean, on that play, he initially showed that they were going to bring blitz. And then you've got Farr thinking about getting the ball out quick at the snap of the ball. You run those defenders then back into coverage. You only rush four. But right now, they're mixing it up pretty good. Low line drive punt and McQuarters decent return out across the 40. Tom Coughlin third try as a head coach in a conference championship game 0 for 2 with Jacksonville. Yeah I tell you what I mean you look at him I think he might want to consider putting a something over his face. I mean it's awfully red and you can get frostbite in these conditions rather quickly. Starting at their own 43 Brandon Jacobs gets to the outside edge and picks up a first down shook the tackle of Woodson 
A.J. Hawk forced him out after a gain of 12 and down to the field. Here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, I think we've got heater gate going on down here. These benches for the visitors are supposed to be heated. I've gone up and down the bench. I've checked them. I put my hand to it. I've taken my glove off to put my hand to it. They are ice cold. There is heat actually blowing into the benches, but the temperature on the heat is absolutely freezing. They get no relief either from those little poles that they're supposed to put their helmets on. These guys are shivering over here. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. Here is another completion of Burris. He's been busy, and so far, Troy Plexico Burris is winning that one-on-one -on -one battle with Al Harris. Boy, he sure is doing a nice job, because if you think back to last week's game, he had one reception for, you know, what, five yards. Has not been a real big factor in the first two playoff games but this is a good matchup it's a good matchup for both teams actually I mean Plexico Burris a physical receiver I know in talking with Al Harris he said he likes playing against bigger receivers not nearly as quick as the little guys he can get his hands on him a little bit easier but so far Plexico Burris has made some nice plays second and three. Manning throws and it's caught by Burris loses the football but out of bounds a penalty flag came in and that's going to be close that might be on Plexico Burris it looked like he pushed Al Harris out of the way in order to get open underneath. They get Al Harris I believe with illegal hands to the face. And we'll take a look at the replay, see if he gets his hands up and right there, up under the mask of Burris. And yet somehow, Troy, Burris hung on, fumbled, but out of bounds. And they're going to mark the ball at the 17-yard line. Yeah, well, you see both guys engage with each other. I mean, Al Harris certainly got his hands up on Plexico Burris. Plexico got his hands up on Al Harris, started to the outside, got physical, got underneath, and then was able, and there they go talking again. And Burris is saying hey I'm on my side of the line of scrimmage. They're yeah. going to move the ball back. <laughs> they had it at the 17 and somehow somebody picked it up and moved it down near the 12. The ball is properly spotted at the 17 after that 21 yard completion of Burris who already has five catches for 64 yards. That'll be a false start as Madison Hedgecock left too early. The referee's mic is not working. Terry McCauley, nobody can hear him, but it was a false start as Hedgecock got out of his stance just a moment too soon. But even on the end of that, Troy, it looked like Manning had time. He hit Toomer. Nice zip on the pass, and Kevin Gilbride certainly isn't scared about putting the ball in Eli's hands. No, I mean, he has done a good job. I think he's called some really great games, and, and he's off to a good start here again in this one. And, you know, mixing it up, moving the pocket a little bit, letting Green Bay know that they're not going to just run the football. They're going to make some plays in the passing game, too. Handoff is to Ahmad Bradshaw. First time he's carried it, did not carry the ball in the first meeting between these two teams. A gain of three as Corey Williams made the stop and this guy's been as impressive as any rookie we have seen here in December and January. Yeah, he runs exceptionally hard. He's about 70 pounds lighter than what Brandon Jacobs is but you know every bit as physical as what he is and then he gives you a little bit of quickness and elusiveness in the hole. I know that they wanted to get both Jacobs and Bradshaw in the game early work them out a little bit and see which guy was going to be able to be the most effective in these conditions and in this ball game and then rely a little more heavily on that guy as the game progressed. Second down and 12 as Manning has all day and throws off the hands of Smith. Steve Smith may have caught the most important pass last week at Dallas as you look at the replay of a ball that goes off his hands and he ran right into Amani Toomer as he went out into the route. But Troy, that catch, even two he made last week at the end of the first half, put the Giants in a position to tie that game and 
46 seconds. You know, for a guy who was coming on early in the season, he got hurt against these Packers in week two, fractured his shoulder, missed 11 games. I think wide receiver position is a very difficult position to come in as a rookie and have an impact. He missed, obviously, a lot of time, but he has played really, really well here over the last two, three weeks. That poor happy couple can't catch a break. Everywhere they go, they turn on the TV. <laughs> Cabo San Lambo. <laughs> By the way, Eli's big brother Peyton is not here. He was in attendance at Giant Stadium for a four interception day, and Peyton's staying away. Mom and dad are. Third down and 12. Out of the shotgun, Manning throws, and incomplete off the hands of David Tyree. Pretty good throw by Manning. Tyree had a shot at it. Tremont Williams was out there in coverage and a 37 yard field goal try is about to be attempted by Lawrence Times. Yeah that was a ball it was well thrown and, and Williams never really got turned around to try to make a play on it and you know had Eli been able to get the ball just a little bit higher it looked like Tyree might have been able to make a, make a catch. 37 yard try to double the lead by Times. Started it left and it faded right back through. So Lawrence Tynes not having much of an issue with the elements. He has hit twice at 6 0 Giants. And for the Green Bay Packers during the week on Wednesday, Mike McCarthy and this staff, they just they didn't tell anybody. They froze footballs and just put it into practice on Wednesday. And with a frozen football, the Green Bay Packers. Had to work all week. They haven't done much with one here tonight against this well playing Giants defense as Corin Robinson can't get to it and now just scrambles to get back on top of it. Live ball and the Packers, Tremont Williams back there as well. The Packers have it, but barely. I'll tell you they were fortunate here. Corn Robinson just takes his eyes off it, it looked like, and then he's scrambling trying to get on it. And you know, that's what happens. The ball gets slick in these types of conditions when you're dealing with these when it's as cold as what it is, and he's he's just not, not able to make a play. And you're right, Joe. I mean, very, very fortunate that they got on this one. Jermon Williams, the one there to save it. Special teams so important. With the elements being what they are and something that Tom Coughlin talks about every week he believes he has an edge there. Almost a key turnover by the Packers who trail by six starting at their own ten. And here is driver behind the defense foot race. Down the sideline still going Donald driver for the touchdown no flags. Just a blown coverage here. You got Corey Webster that's on him, and you know he's in him on on him man to man. And because he tries to come up and get the jam on him, and Donald Driver gets away, and then he goes on in for the touchdown. But that's that's what you worry about when you try to come up and get a jam on a receiver. We talked to Greg Jennings. He said, "I hope these giant cornerbacks try and jam us and play us man to man and get up in our face." For the Green Bay Packers they had 27 yards on their first 11 plays now they have 90 more thanks to the longest play in Packers postseason history. Donald Driver just won that battle at the line of scrimmage did the rest won the foot race and the Packers lead by one. Dominic Hickson on the return for the Giants. 
out to the 28 and we go back to the touchdown. Yeah and they're just matched up one on one here because James Butler the safety he had to go with the tight end and and like I said Corey Webster comes up to get the jam and then he just gets thrown off because of the physicalness of Donald Driver and you know Brett Favre just lays it out perfectly. You know the the Green Bay Packers came into this game as the second leading team in plays of 20 yards or more and really had not done much in this game. The Giants had had all the offense but you know one play later all of a sudden they take the lead. Bradshaw the tailback he gets it. Makes some moves in the hole keeps those feet going and gets it out to the 36 good for seven yards. You look at the leaders offensively for the Giants as we tell you that Brett Favre just had his 18th straight game with a touchdown pass thanks to that 90 yarder to driver and 38 career touchdown passes during his postseason career for Brett Favre that second best of Montana second and three. Ahmad Bradshaw tripped up by Bigby. No game. Third down. The Atari Bigby last week had a huge game and really came on strong in the month of December as well. This guy is a big hitter. When he came to Green Bay, they first had him at linebacker. They finally moved him back to safety. He's very, very aggressive. I know that the Giants feel that if they can. If they can run the football and start getting the safeties to hit it like we just saw from Bigby at some point they're going to want to take a shot down the field. Third down and three play action from Manning throws completes to Burris gets a big hit from Bigby who's been laying out receivers but Plexico Burris is having a great first half. I tell you I mean that was a big hit and a great job by Burris hanging on to the football. You know he runs a good route as far as just finding where the hole is. He's trying to run a natural pick. The ball initially was going to go to the outside and then Bigby comes in leads with his shoulder and his helmet. A pretty good lick on Burris. Six catches for Plexico Burris who's playing like a game breaker. In this NFC Championship game, he played in one in the AFC with the Steelers. This one is thrown out of the reach of his receiver, Kevin Boss. And Brady Papinga was coming on a blitz to pressure Eli Manning at second and 10. Yeah, the Packers are not a team that bring a lot of pressure. For the most part this year, they relied on their front four in order to get to the quarterback but if they feel that the quarterback is getting too much time and Eli Manning has had some time to find his receivers then they're going to start bringing Nick Barnett they're going to start bringing Papinga like we saw on the last play. Second and ten. Pass incomplete there was contact on boss it looked like it came before the throw got there but no flag and it's third and ten the Giants sideline is screaming for a flag and they don't get it. Yeah that one was close they got boss in the slot and I can see that one I mean it was a close call you know more times than not when you get into these types of games the officials want to be certain that it's pass interference before they're going to throw the flag third and ten. Manning with time again incomplete for Amani Toomer covered well by Woodson. I tell you what this turned into a slugfest between Plexico Burris and Al Harris. You can see the contact all the way down the field and Burris as soon as he, as soon as the ball was thrown he, he's he's looking to see if there's a flag feeling that there was contact that was made beyond the five yards and then Amani Toomer there. Trying to bring that one in, unable to. They already got Al Harris once for hands to the face. They could have gotten him there for sure. Line drive punt. Tremont Williams will dive on it. A risky play by Tremont Williams, but he came up with it cleanly in a 33 yard punt. Zero on the return. 
under nine to play here in the half in this Packer offense which is had one big play to give them the lead that 90 yarder from Brett Favre to Donald Driver back on the field. So inside our booth where it's not glassed in <laughs> it is a little chilly it's yeah. good to be with you buddy well, and uh, what a setting here for this NFC championship. Well, it's, it, I mean it's unbelievable I mean it, you, you can tell how cold it is up here but it's even colder down there and yet they're playing and executing as if it's not as bad as we initially thought coming into the game. And I think to this point both Ryan teams deserve a lot of credit as Ryan Grant gets it of, of putting the cold out of their minds and just going and playing and I think that's sometimes easier said than done but we are seeing you know whether it's Eli Manning to plexigo burst big hits these guys hanging on to the football pretty darn good uh, for both sides. Well it is I mean it's good stuff and and you know Eli Manning is throwing the ball you know very well in my opinion and then of course the touchdown there by Brett Favre to to take the lead and and you know that neither team's running the ball particularly well right now and that. That really does surprise me a little bit especially for Green Bay. Green Bay's not even trying to run it as this one is zinged in there from Favre and a catch by Donald Lee. 18 yards to the tight end who's had a breakout season. They see Brett I mean Donald Lee just work in the middle of the field there Kavika Mitchell in coverage and you know if there's one area of this Giants defense to where they do have some issues it's in that intermediate area with linebackers in coverage I know back to week two these teams have dramatically changed you know since that game but the tight ends for Green Bay were able to exploit some of the coverage with the Giants. They stay away from the run still and complete it to Greg Jennings in the second year wide receiver. Another first down as he gets it inside the 45, a 14 yard catch and run. Good move out there by Jennings. You know, Greg Jennings in his second season, and I mean, this guy is going to be a real superstar. He's very explosive. You see the moves here after the catch. Jabril Wilson not able to make the tackle. And you know, I know in talking with Brett Favre, he said from day one, he knew that this guy was something special. In fact, Greg Jennings said in order to get used to catching passes from Brett Favre before he even got to camp, he started using a jugs machine because Brett throws the ball so hard. Favre to the sideline. A lot of hand checking going on between Webster and Jones and the pass incomplete. Brett Favre is playing in his fourth NFC championship game. He lost his first one in 95 to your Cowboys. He won in 96 here on a cold game against Carolina. That was the year that they went on to the Super Bowl and beat New England. They won a rematch with New England as they won today over San Diego. And he also won in 97 at San Francisco. And Favre and the pack lost to John Elway and the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. Second and ten. Over the middle. This one's batted down and nearly intercepted. Tuck got his hand up. And then the ball was stuck against some bodies and the Giants almost came away with it. Pass was intended for Ryan Grant. I tell you, the one guy on this Giants defense. I mean, I think if you if you look at the the year that this defense has had, the guy who I believe has had the biggest impact has been Justin Tuck. I mean, if Michael Strahan had not have come back when he did, Justin Tuck would have been the starter. They still use him in a rotation at defensive end. They also let him play defensive tackle. He's got the strength to play inside, the speed to play outside, and he's a real difference maker. Why they just locked him up. Play clock expiring. Third down and ten. Favre throws down the middle. Ruvel Martin off his hands. Perfect throw by Brett Favre and Martin gets up looking at his gloves like what happened. He couldn't have put it out there any better. Oh man. I mean it wasn't that bad of coverage either and you're right Joe. I mean Brett Favre had to lay this one just perfectly in order to give Martin an opportunity and he did that. You see he drops it right in between two fenders and two defenders and and Martin just not able to bring that in. I mean he hasn't caught a lot of balls but the ones that he has caught have been big plays. That would have been a big one there. 
Ryan hits it. McCorders will stay away, and it will be down inside the 10. After McCorders grabbed it, he's forced out at the 7. Starting from their 7. Down by one of the Giants. Brandon Jacobs over the left side. Look at him just force his way through Barnett. A gain of nine, and that's a middle linebacker that just went for a ride. <laughs> yeah. Took an e-ticket. I mean, this guy is such a horse, and you know, he's got great quickness and speed. I, again, I think people see his size and they don't realize just, just how fast he is as well. And then, you know, blocking on the outside with the Giants wanting to get Jacobs on the edge. You've got to have wide receivers that are capable of then blocking and securing the edge to give them some kind of lane. Jacobs over the left side again. Al Harris can't bring him down, and a flag comes in at the end. Holding offense Second down. They get David Deal, the left tackle, first year left tackle, on a hold. That negates a first down for the Giants. Yeah, that flag came in late too. That's Dave Deal there. And you, and that's what he saw. It was the referee that made the call. And right at the end, after Jacobs got around that block, you could see that he had him there with his right arm. So it erases the first down and brings the ball back inside the ten at the eight, second and nine. Delayed handoff to Jacobs tries the middle this time and Pinga was waiting for him. A gain of only two third and long coming up where well, they're trying to run right into the teeth of that defense Ryan Pickett and the rest of those, that defensive front they're just it's a hard group to move. I tell you, you got Brady Papinga coming up inside and securing it as well and. You know, sometimes getting out on the edge isn't real easy against this group either because of the team's speed. But yet some of the more successful runs that they've had have been with Brandon Jacobs out on the edge. Third down and seven. Play clock expiring. Flags are down and the pass incomplete. Manning just happy to get it and get rid of it. And it's an illegal shift. Illegal shift. Off that. Two men moving for the snap is not real set. Phillies decline. Fourth down. So a fourth down and that holding call against Dave Deal was a big part of the Giants having to punt here with 435 left in the half. Yeah, no question, because if they without that, then they pick up the first down and another set of downs, and then they give themselves more room if they're not even able to pick up a first down from there. But because of the penalties now. You've got Fiegel's having to punt from his own end zone. Not known for the big leg, more of a directional type punter. It's a decent one here. Tremont Williams with a fair catch. And they will mark him at the 47. And there is Vince Lombardi. And those who know the history of Vince Lombardi know that he was a New York guy through and through. Sheep's Head Bay in Brooklyn. Went to Fordham. Coach up the Hudson at Army. Came here in 59 as Ryan Grant carries for no game. And we're under four and a half to play. As you look at the offensive leaders for Green Bay and for Lombardi, he was an assistant and in the position of what is now considered an offensive coordinator for a championship team with the Giants at 56. When he came here he inherited Horning and he always considered Horning here like Gifford was with the Giants. Second and ten. Pass is behind and out of the reach of driver who didn't get his head around by the time far there's one of those quick set up and throws that we expected to see more of coming into this game from Brett Favre. Yeah and that was the blitz there for the New York Giants coming off the slot. They like to do a lot of that. You know whenever a team tries to spread them out Steve Spagnola you know he'll bring that slot pressure trying to get 
the ball out quick from the quarterback with a defender over the top of him and and again this is where they really like to bring the pressure as well but because they brought it on the last play they may not do it here. Third down and ten Favre has thrown four straight incompletions. That's for driver and a flag comes down. Michael Johnson on the coverage. Part of the pass, illegal contact, defense, number 43. Five yard penalty, automatic, first down. So, Troy, it looked like the Packers were going to do nothing with this good field position. Just have a three and out, and the illegal contact gives them a fresh set of downs. Well, that's, I mean, that's tough duty right there for a rookie safety covering Donald Driver. They did bring the blitz, and so now everybody else is locked up man to man. And to ask Michael Johnson, who's not even a corner, to then cover a slot receiver who's as good as Donald Driver, that's, that's hard to do. A rare run by Ryan Grant. Grant picks up one. The story of Ryan Grant, who had a Packer playoff record last week, 201 yards after those two early fumbles against the Seahawks. It's an interesting one. He was undrafted out of Notre Dame. Giants signed him in 2005. He has an accident falling in a bar, slicing his artery in his left arm. Eight months in a cast, eight months of rehab, was told he made the Giants team out of camp in the first day of September he's traded here to Green Bay and he has taken over the running game for Mike McCarthy second and nine Grant has not been much of a factor today at all as this one is slinged into the arms of Donald Driver and a first down just outside the giant 20. This offensive line last week did a great job against Seattle. They're doing a good job here. I mean, the Giants led the league in sacks. You can see the pocket that Brett Favre had in order to turn this one loose. And and then talking about turning someone loose, they turned Driver loose right down the middle of the field. You know, here's Strahan on Tauscher. You know, Tauscher last week went up against Patrick Kearney. Patrick Kearney did not have a sack, did not have a pressure, and did not have a tackle in that game. 14 and a half sacks during the regular season for Kearney and Tauscher shut him down. Here's Grant down to the 19. That didn't look good. Call your local travel agent for a nice vacation package to Godfab Greenland, which is actually icy as opposed to Iceland, which is more green. 23 degrees. North Pole, Alaska, 23. In Moscow, it's 31, and here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, it's minus two. And no place else we'd rather be, right? Absolutely. In this cathedral for sports, Lambeau Field. Second and eight. Packers up by one. Another throw far to the end zone and incomplete. Pass intended for Greg Jennings and there was good coverage down there by Sam Madison. We haven't talked Troy about a the dislocated shoulder for Corey Webster or B Madison who's finally playing after that abdominal strain. Yeah he had the abdominal strain in the last game of the season against the New England Patriots and he's missed the last two games and and they have missed him even though this group has really done a good job they've been so thin. That especially in this game going up against four and five wide receivers, it's a good thing that he's out there on the field. I said Webster, it's Ross who has the dislocated shoulder that we witnessed last week in Dallas. Favre now on third down, setting up a screen, and you talk about a great play by Antonio Pierce. Troy, there was nobody else out there, and if Pierce doesn't do that, it's at the least a first down if not a touchdown. Yeah and there were blockers there you know you're right Antonio Pierce right here in the middle he he reads it and sees that it's screen and, and look what he's got out in front of him. I mean there's three blockers and yet he's able to go through them and get there to make the play. I mean this was going to be a big gain if Pierce isn't there in order to bring him to the ground. What an outstanding play by Antonio Pierce who is the leader right in the middle of it all defensively 
for the Giants and Steve Spagnolo. You think about those first two games, the Giants' his defense gave up 90 points to the Dallas Cowboys and then to these Green Bay Packers. Spagnolo, first year, not a big guy physically over there on the sideline. You think, oh, well, he's overmatched. They don't have the guys. Then they come back, they pitch a shutout in the second half of that game in Washington, come back and win. First of a six game streak, and then for his defense to hold Dallas to three points in the second half last week, a big reason why on this stage he has emerged as a head coaching candidate, most notably for Atlanta. Crosby, the rookie, no problem. It's a four point game, 37 yard field goal. From Mason Crosby. And, and right now, Eli Manning, you know, you think back to last week and what he was able to do in, in 47 seconds and take them down the field and tie that game up. I mean, with a minute and 30 seconds here and, and one timeout, I mean, plenty of time for him to get this team in a position to come away with points once again in this game. Ball blows off the tee for the second time. And with the field as it is, and it's much better than it's ever been with this DD Grassmaster. It's part natural turf, part synthetic. It is heated underneath. It's held up extremely well. But if somebody slips down and falls, you know, you put it up in the air, you make good throws, you might have a chance to come up with something big. As Dominic Hickson takes it from inside the 10. And Rouse on the tackle wrestles him down after a return of 17 yards. Out to the 23 yard line. That's where the Giants will start. He, he says Plex Burris, one of the five best wide receivers that he faces year in and year out, and has a great deal of respect for the type of competitor that Plexico is and has been. Yeah, he's shown up big here in this half. Hand off to Bradshaw underneath. And with one timeout remaining in the half, a nine yard carry by Bradshaw. A little change up there from the Giants. Manning for Burris. Down the field, Plexigo Burris, another big catch. They're going to mark him at the 36 yard line, and Manning will spend that last time out. Burst, gosh, having himself a day. Forty eight seconds remain. No timeouts for the Giants, down by four. Manning Burris gets behind Harris. Manning hit him in stride, and they are going to rule it. Now the whistles. First they said catch, and it was a live ball and a fumble. Now they're calling incomplete. And if this is under review, it'll come from the booth. Again, we say it every week in the act of going to the ground during Passes a catch. Incomplete. 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 Second down. Second. If you're going to the ground as part of the catch, you have to maintain possession after hitting the ground. Burris did not, and that's why they ruled it correctly incomplete. Yeah, that was the right call, and I was surprised that the official initially was, was going to rule it as a completion and then a fumble. Now, the Packers on the last two plays have run the exact same coverage. They've gone man-to-man, one-on-one -on, -one on Plexico, and both times, Plexico has beaten the coverage. Manning steps up, going to run, can't outrun Barnett. Remember, no timeouts left for the Giants. And with it being third down here, he wants to make a call to try to get something more so that they can try to get a field goal if they don't get the first down. Manning throws, was hit as he let it go. Steve Smith, the intended receiver, Kabir Bajab Miabila. And Aaron Campman were in Eli Manning's face. Now it's fourth and eight with 11 seconds left. Boy, how close were the Giants there when Plexigo Burris couldn't hang on going to the ground? And this is as good as we have ever seen Plexigo Burris look. Oh, no question. I mean, right now, you'd say coming into this game, 
pretty evenly good pretty even matchup there with Al Harris and Plexico Burris but you know Burris is winning that matchup and I don't think that they will give Al Harris help but they sure should think about it. Just get it away. Manning A.J. Hawk and this half is going to end with a kneel down by the Green Bay Packers as the Giants turn it over on downs and Eli Manning in New York came oh so close but on fourth down can't make anything happen and the Packers will take over up by four and you would expect Brett Favre to take a knee. Yeah I would think so and and I know that's discouraging for Eli Manning and the Giants because you know they made a couple big plays there the first one there to Plexico Burris had a great opportunity on the one that he was not able to control going down to the ground. Obviously they probably come away with a field goal if they don't get anything more out of that one but a real chance at coming away with a touchdown instead they're going to have to go in down four. That's it for the half. Strahan and Favre run off the field for a moment together and it is a good tight game here at Lambeau. It is a four point game at the half. It was minus one with a wind chill of minus. Look at that Troy. It's not as wind chilly so far as we've gone through this game and warming up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it still it uh, I mean the way these guys are handling it has been has been pretty remarkable particularly these quarterbacks. I mean you look at you know how well each of these teams have thrown the ball. Uh, you know the Packers not running the ball as well as what we anticipated them coming in but you know both offenses have executed pretty well. You look at the four drops for the Giants it was something that plagued them during the regular season one on the pass inside the five to Plexico Burst. I haven't really been that impressed though all that being said with the Green Bay offense they have had the one play for 90 yards and an offense that has been impressive all year Green Bay other than that play they've had 24 yards of offense. Yeah that's been the, the big difference in the game and then the Giants having to settle for field goals. Hickson from the 10. Gets it out across the 30. They'll mark him at the 31. That's where the. Giants will start with it. We go down to Pam Oliver. Yeah, Joe, Tom Coughlin's primary concern of the half was the offense. He was sick about the group not being able to get the ball into the end zone, or what he calls the green zone, I should say. He also wants to see more consistency with the run. He says defensively, too, they're going to have to help us. We need turnovers from that unit. Michael Strahan walked down the tunnel with this refrain. We've got to be in it. We might as well win it. Back to you, Joe. All right. Starting at their own 31 yard line. First down Giants. Brandon Jacobs and you said it. It is clear that if he's going to run with any success. He's had most of it bouncing it to the edge. Yeah it's just a defensive front that's very very difficult to move out. I mean in addition to Ryan Pickett Corey Williams. You know those guys do such a good job. And if they hold their ground I mean Ryan Pickett especially you know they're always double teaming him and and he's had a great year I mean he's been one of the real difference makers for this defensive unit in terms of playing the run It's very difficult to get yardage there between the tackles second down and eight Manning throws Plexico Burris has a first down for New York. I tell you Kevin Gilbride has recognized that there's one big playmaker out there on the field and it's number 17 for the Giants and you're going to get one on one coverage I think I'd be looking for him every time I mean right now Plexico Burris for a guy who has been playing with a bad ankle a torn ligament in his ankle I mean he's running good routes are crisp he's getting out of the breaks that was a heck of a catch right there with his hands. You know being able to haul that one in in these conditions he can't feel the ankle that's that's what's going on. <laughs> Here's Jacobs he gets one yard let's go down to the field and Chris Myers. Joe and Troy I asked coach Mike McCarthy about that at halftime will he think about giving Al Harris some additional help and covering Plaxico Burris and he said yeah we have something our cloud kind of defense that we may go to that it's an option but I like to stay with what we're doing he said on offense there were some things they could have taken advantage of big plays that they did not but he wants to run the ball more in the second half and he said he's uh, he's not cold at all in fact he has too many layers on 
He's yeah. in the minority. Yeah, and that cloud coverage that Mike McCarthy was referencing is putting a safety over the top to give him a little help. On second down, sideline open but thrown behind is Steve Smith. Coverage by Tremont Williams and a better throw. He may walk into the end zone. Yeah, uh, he was open. No question about it, Joe. If, if Eli Manning had been able to get that ball out there, you know, like he had earlier in the half with Plexico Burris, he runs in for the touchdown. He just was not able to get it out in front. Steve Smith ran a little bit of a double move there and then was able to get by him. You see the stutter move on the outside. Williams bit on that. And that's what created the separation. Three straight games with a quarterback rating over 100 for Eli Manning. Still no turnovers in this game and uh, look at the play clock it expires. And they will grant the timeout. Sixth time that these two franchises have met during the postseason third down and nine. For the Giants down by four. A blitz from Green Bay and the pass is picked off. There is a flag down. Al Harris comes away with a pick, but a flag came down. Illegal contact, defense, number 31. Five yard penalty, automatic. First down. So the battle continues between Harris and Burris. Well, it sure does. I mean, this is exactly what Eli wanted. You saw the contact there is, you know, Al Harris was expecting the curl route. That's what they've been completing. And so he was playing inside leverage. He did have contact. I mean, you can't argue that. It was a good call by the official. And a missed opportunity there for the Green Bay Packers. That erases what would have been the Giants' first turnover during this postseason, where they have won at Tampa Bay. They won last week at Dallas, and here they are down by four, but very much in it. And Plexigo Burris and Al Harris John after that last play. Second and eight. Brandon Jacobs. Barnett made the tackle a gain of three third down coming up for New York. I tell you they just have not been able to get much going with Brandon Jacobs and you know here's a guy who averaged five yards a carry in the regular season. He has not been as productive here in postseason and I know as I said earlier these coaches were going to take a look at him. They're going to take a look at Ahmad Bradshaw and then see who was better equipped. You know in this game Ahmad Bradshaw like he has been in postseason has been the more productive of the two runners. I don't think they've given him enough of a shot here today. Third down and five. A blitz from Green Bay and the pass is batted down a flag comes in. Personal foul rushing the passer. Defense number 36. 15 yard penalty automatic first down. The blitzer Nick Collins. Well, and he came late too. You're going to see him right up here. He comes late from a deep set. Normally when they're going to bring safety blitz he's going to be closer to the line of scrimmage. You see he lets it go and then he takes the hit. I mean that was a tough one there for Collins to try to pull up. I mean when you're trying to get to the quarterback you're running full speed the ball comes out. It's a hard thing to do but you know that is what the rule reads. His head coach Mike McCarthy telling him to be smart. That's a big 15 yard penalty taking the ball to the Green Bay 32. Jacob stays in a tailback and Brandon Jacobs gets it cuts it upfield and picks up three. Nick Barnett the middle linebacker on the tackle and this crowd still doesn't like that call against Collins. Yeah and, I, and they don't like the one earlier against Al Harris either. I mean you look at this possession for the Giants and you say well we we had an interception we get called for for illegal contact and then then we get the, the late hit on the quarterback to keep a drive alive. And now they're in pretty good position. Second and seven. Both those penalties coming on third down. Packers show blitz yeah, and right Manning there. changes it. 
Pass to Burris. Perfect throw from Manning. That back shoulder throw, a little turn and a catch, and we've seen these two do this a lot this season. This is just such a tough pass to defense. You're going to see Eli Manning, and when he turns this one loose, you know, it's a back shoulder fade. You got Al Harris over the top. He turned it loose before Plexico Burris even got turned around. Takes pretty good time in between the quarterback and receiver in order to be able to complete a ball like that. First down at the 11. Hand off to Jacobs. A little better run this time up the middle. Picks up four and a half. I think they're going to have to start thinking about giving him a little help because Plexco Burris is having himself a heck of a game. Now Woodson's across from Burris in the slot and Jacobs is knocked down very near the first down marker. Depends on the spot. The Giants can get a first down without a touchdown. And we'll have a measurement. So they call timeout on the field. And they're going to bring the chains out to measure and see if it's first and goal. From just outside the one. Just short. So it's third down. Burris in his three years with the Giants 29 touchdowns came from the Steelers where he spent five years had 22 he and Eli Manning becoming quite a combination and what a day yeah, and really in what I mean what a year considering how he's been banged up and what he has fought through at another thousand yard receiving season this year third and inches. Jacobs gets it. Brandon Jacobs has enough for the first down. The ball comes out. They're calling that a live ball. Kevin Boss, the rookie tight end, looked like he got on top of it. They are signaling. They're signaling fourth down. But with the, the fans got excited because the official had his arm pointing in the direction of the Green Bay Packers. Let's look first and see if it is a fumble if that ball comes out. Now here's a little bit better look at it to see if the ball does come out before he's on the ground. Oh yeah. And it does. So that's a live ball and then Kevin Boss. Got his arms around it. It stays with New York and now we'll have a measurement. It's enough for a first down. So what a moment there for the Giants as Jacobs on third and inches lost the ball and Kevin Boss saved the play and this drive for New York. And you see how he gets held up here. I mean Brandon Jacobs is six four. He's not a guy who really gets his pad level down. And so because he's an upright runner you know people are able to get to him pretty quickly. Now they got to his feet. And just did not do a good enough job securing the ball. They were fortunate there. Coming through was Williams, and they'll throw a flag late. Pass was incomplete. Manning saw Corey Williams in his face. Outside, outside. Defense, number 99. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It's the second time they've gotten Williams on this, and. Well they get Williams normally they'll say unabated to the quarterback I think that's what Eli Manning was waiting for he's wondering why it took him so long to to throw the flag or even whistle this one dead. That's the third Green Bay penalty on this drive and it moves the ball inside the one a half yard away and more action on the line of scrimmage flags fly all over the place. As Brandon Jacobs goes backward, but it looked like Green Bay did it again. Outside, outside, defense, number 77. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. They're trying to get a jump on the snap with the ball now inside the one, and they're coming across early, and that'll move it to the one quarter yard line. Yeah, they're just trying to anticipate the snap count so they can get a push. 
and keep the Giants from getting this into the end zone. I know as a quarterback, I always wanted to get up and get the ball snapped as quickly as possible and not force your offensive line to stay in their stance any longer than necessary. What would Bart Starr do here? He's at the game. Giants handed to Jacobs and he pounds it in for the touchdown and then taunts the fans down <laughs> near the end zone as if he was going to leap into him. But he thought better of it and now the Giants have regained their lead and with the extra point coming they can make it a three point lead. Well it was a good drive by the Giants I mean they got some help there obviously by the Packers and the penalties. But nevertheless to be able to get down there and then punch it in. It's a good job on their part. The play clock's too high for Brandon Jacobs to throw it against. And it's a three point game. How about the fourth postseason touchdown for Brandon Jacobs as he pounded it in from a yard out and it's been an impressive day for this Giants offense Green Bay really hasn't moved the ball save for one play that 90 yard touchdown to Donald Driver and now the Packers are down by three. 756 left in the third quarter as Tynes kicks it away. This one's taken by Tremont Williams. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Good return. Gets it outside. Trying to beat Webster. Corey Webster saved a touchdown. By our count, Brett Favre has not been out on the field in a little over 37 minutes. With halftime factored in that long drive by the Giants. Now he and Green Bay are down three. Starting at the Giant 39, quick throw, Donald Driver. Hit by Jabril Wilson after a gain of eight. And now this quarterback, who is number one among quarterbacks in NFL history in wins, touchdowns, interceptions, passing yardage, the only three time MVP in league history, making his 22nd career postseason start, playing from behind. Second and two. Ryan Grant has not been a factor at all. Seven carries, 12 yards, gets it over the right side, and he is knocked down right at the marker. Kavika Mitchell on the tackle for the Giants. Yeah, this is going to be close as to whether or not they pick up the first down here, and you're right, Joe. I mean, they've just not really been able to get Ryan Grant going, and in order for them to move the football, they just had to rely on the arm of Brett Favre. The one big play, of course, for the touchdown. We're going to get a measurement here. Last week, 408 yards of total offense against Seattle. So far in this game, 183. First down, Green Bay. You think back to even the last game of the season for the Packers they ran for over 200 yards in that game over 200 yards last week against Seattle they've done a good job running the football certainly Ryan Grant has with this Giants defense I mean we talk about their pass rush and their ability to get after the quarterback and they've done a good job all season long stopping the run as well. Throws incomplete on first down. Crowd looking for a flag, so is Favre, and he and the Packers are not going to get one at second and ten. It looked like there for a minute OC Umanura was going to be able to get his hand, you know, on the ball. He comes around the edge there on Clifton and then just misses it there with Favre. He immediately is going for the ball, just can't quite get his hand on it. And on the back end of that, thought there might be some contact and was looking for the flag. Second and ten. Favre, a screen, Morenci. Boy, Troy, the screen game has always been so big in this Packer offense as Favre has been here. And with Justin Tuck making that play 
to bring down Morenci. The screen game just has not been there for Favre all year long. Well, it hasn't, and it hasn't been here in this game just because of effort like that by Justin Tuck. I mean, when you see a guy who is chasing a play from behind, I mean, then it's hard to get the screen because so much of it is slow initially to, to get going, and then Tuck's able to run it down before he's able to get in behind those blockers that were out in front of him. Third down and eight. Blitz coming from the Giants. This one is tipped twice and caught short of the first down by Donald Driver. And now a flag comes down as Madison and Morenci were getting into it. And Morenci thinks this one's against Madison. First down. This is as big a penalty as has happened in this game because instead of fourth down, it gives Green Bay the first down as they trail by three. Well, Sam Madison came off the corner. It was a corner blitz, and Morenci picked him up, does a great job of picking him up in pass protection. You're going to see him here. He comes over and blocks him and then they continue to engage right there and then eventually Sam Madison just threw him on the ground. It's just not smart. I mean they had him stopped and then Sam Madison just kept going and and wouldn't let the play go. Keep penalties on both defense defenses here in this third quarter as far looks end zone Lee. Touchdown. This one is awfully close and the two officials are talking to each other making sure that Lee got that second foot down. Yeah he was pretty casual with that second foot Joe I agree it was hard to determine whether or not he actually got it in. He was waiting for this ball wide open but let's look at his feet. He had a little tap tap with his feet as he cradled it right there. And I think that's a touchdown all the way. Yep. No challenge flag is thrown. The extra point is good, and Green Bay is back on top by four. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Makes me feel like a real sissy. <laughs> Third lead change of the game. As Hickson returns it for the Giants. Had a seam and is all the way across the 40. A 49 yard kickoff return by Tremont Williams set up the touchdown drive. Third down penalty for a personal foul against Sam Madison kept it going and Favre hit Donald Lee. For the touchdown in the back of the end zone. Dominic Hickson with a 33 yard return sets up this good field position at the Giants 43 and an eight yard completion of Burris. Second and two. Let's go down to Chris Myers. Joe, after that last series, Packer coaches came over to the defensive line on the bench and said, You're too jumpy, calm down. We don't need any more penalties in this game. And Plexico Burris has made it a point to come by the Packer bench and yell out, He can't cover me, pointing to Al Harris. Well, Charles Woodson couldn't cover him either. He was on him on the last play. Second down and two. Ahmad Bradshaw. Pushes the pile, has a first down at the 45, and I'd be interested to see what Bradshaw can do carrying the ball on this possession as opposed to Brandon Jacobs. Bradshaw has a first down for New York. Well, there's no question that they have confidence in, in his ability to run the football, but also his ability to protect the football. He had a fumble. His last fumble came against the Packers in week two on a kickoff return. Since then, he's not put the ball on the ground. He gets it over the right side, breaks the tackle. Ahmad Bradshaw making a difference as he does week after week. Picks up 10 to the 35. Fox Super Sunday, politics and football, the two things everybody's talking about. It all starts February 3rd, 9 Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Amani Toomer overthrown, second and 10. Yeah, they tried that stop fade that time to Amani Toomer. They got it earlier as we saw to Plexico Burris. 
You know these corners they just they, you know they're so good at being able to match up and generally you know you don't see very many people take advantage of Al Harris the way that we've seen Plexico Burris do that today. Ten catches for 140 yards. Second and ten Manning looked right now left airs it out down the sideline hit tumor and the catch is made at the 12 yard line perfect throw by Manning and somehow Amani tumor got his feet down for 23 yard completion Yeah, and Eli Manning he's trying to get the ball snapped so it won't be reviewed Charles Woodson that time covering tumor the flag the challenge flag was thrown prior to the snap. McCarthy threw the flag. One of the officials saw it. Terry McCauley, the referee, did not. Green Bay has challenged that the pass was incomplete. Timeout. There's a freeze frame look at the catch made by Amani Toomer. Laid out, taps the toes down, and we'll get the official call from Terry McCauley. After you, the receiver controlled the ball and dragged both toes in the field of play. The ruling on the field stands, completed pass. Green Bay is charged with their first timeout. So each team now with two timeouts remaining, and this was a great throw and an even better catch by Monty Toomer. Well, it sure was. I mean, and the one thing you know that as a quarterback, when you play against a defense that plays this style with these corners, and they're going to come up and jam your guys. I mean it takes all the guesswork out of it for your quarterback you know you're going to get press coverage you know for the most part it's going to be man to man coverage and so you can take those kinds of shots with confidence up the sidelines as long as your receivers are winning as Amani did there on first down from the 12 a roll right and another good throw from Manning hits tumor on this side of the field another eight yard completion from Eli Manning who has done again here tonight. What he has certainly done in this postseason at Tampa Bay and at Dallas, and that is manage the game and move the ball with precision. Yeah, he's just making good throws. I mean, I I know what you're saying, Joe, and, and when you you know manage it and you're making the right plays and doing the right things, going the right places with the ball, and he's making excellent throws and giving his receivers opportunities to make plays. Second down and two, Bradshaw cuts it up. And is into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, Ahmad Bradshaw, and he had help from Kareem McKenzie pulling him into the end zone. And that's the burst and, and the quickness that Ahmad Bradshaw brings. I mean, he was starting to the outside. The play was designed to go off tackle. But then with his vision, he's going to see once he gets here that it opens up and then he's going to cut it back inside. You take a look, he's going to follow, he's going to follow his fullback, and then with that hole right through the middle. I mean, just a good job on his part, a good job by the offensive line, but but great vision by Ahmad Bradshaw. Fourth lead change of this NFC Championship game. And it's a three-point New York lead at 20 to 17. Proving himself again here today. Seven play drive covering the 57 yards, and the Packers about to get it back. And now Brett Favre will have to try and answer Eli Manning with, as I said earlier, his mom and dad here at Lambeau and his older brothers watching on television, including Peyton, who's watching not here at Lambeau, didn't want to jinx his younger brother, <laughs> Eli. Well, that was a nice drive by the Giants in terms of just answering the score that the Packers had and being able to put something together. And yeah, like you said, Joe, now, now it's Brett Favre's time. And he's going to try to do it without a whole lot of help with the running game himself. Tynes kicks it away. Here is Tremont Williams who will let it go into the end zone. And the Packers will start at their 20. I know it surprised you Troy when we looked at the stats and the Giants are coming off back to back games where they hadn't turned the ball over for the first time since 2002 and they haven't done it in the postseason <laughs> since 1990 and they're 
hanging on to the football here on this cold day at Lambeau, not turning it over. Yeah, I mean, it really is remarkable when you think about it that they've gone five years without going back to back games without turning it over. And, and you know, this is something that Tom Coughlin preaches all the time. And and as we said, coming into this game, that really has been their blueprint for winning here in the postseason is that they've not turned the ball over. They've not been, you know, all that spectacular offensively, although they have been here today as far as creating some big plays and you know any team's hard to beat when you're not beating yourself by laying the ball on the ground and you can see the ball control so it's not like they haven't had it they've been able to move it they've been able to hang on to it and they have a three point lead here's Robinson after a pump fake out to driver Favre pulls it back and airs it out for Corin Robinson good for 16 yards yeah, and you saw Favre shaking his head a little bit they're able to get pressure on him OCU Manure is able to go right through Clifton and get to him and again they, they just bust coverage on the back side of that you know that's how they got the touchdown to driver earlier in the game and you know sometimes because of all the different things that the Giants do defensively they have been known to turn some people loose and they've done that in this game. Ryan Grant the tailback gets it and finally breaks loose his best run of the day is good for 13 yards the former giant still friends with so many of these current New York Giants for his couple of years there and that time he showed some burst yeah that time he was finally able to get a little bit of a crease you're going to see the line this is a zone blocking scheme there's not a whole lot there. But he's able to get into it and that's the one thing that he does a great job of is he'll press the hole press the hole as soon as he sees any daylight then he just hits it going north and south under a minute to play in the third quarter Grant gets it this time he is met in the backfield Fred Robbins making the play no gain second down and ten. Twelve seconds and counting left in this third quarter. Far rolls right by some time gets a block airs it out a good bit of coverage downfield by the Giants and as the third quarter expires third down and ten for Brett Favre and the Packers down by three as we start the fourth quarter minus three wind chill of minus twenty four. Ball on the Green Bay side of midfield. Favre over the middle completes. Donald Driver sets up a first down inside the 35 down near the 31. 20 yards for a big first down. Yeah, and good protection up front. Mark Tauscher doing a good job on Michael Strahan on the outside. They brought a blitz on the inside with the linebackers. They shore that up. And so then they've got the, the matchups on the back end that they were looking for. Donald Driver there. You know, Aaron Ross in coverage, but a good conversion there for the Packers. 20 yard completion. From the 31 now, first down. That was a conversion on third and ten. Favre with time and nowhere to go with the ball. Now downfield and it's picked off. Favre forced it. This ball is intercepted and now fumbled. And Tauscher downfield has it for Green Bay. First down Packers. McWhorter's intercepted it. And Tauscher hustling downfield to try and make the tackle comes up with a fumble recovery <laughs> and Brett's trying to figure out what just happened and so is Tom Coughlin I mean Brett Favre is able to get outside the pocket it looked initially like he was trying to get all the way backside and then he came into Corn Robinson the ball got away from him and McCorder's just not able to hang on to it Ryan Grant the one that forced the fumble as McCorder's came away with his third interception in as many postseason games this year. Robinson makes the catch down to the 19 yard line back to the line of scrimmage. You know Favre initially he's able to get outside the pocket but you know right there is when he's able to avoid O.C. Umanura. 
Initially it looked like he was going to get sacked and then here's the strip. You know Grant's the one who's able to get it on the ground and, and Tauscher. I mean that just it's a good job on his part just continuing to play a lot of times these linemen they let it go but he got down there he was following the action of the game. Winds up making a good recovery. I mean Tauscher was 20 yards downfield. And as it turned out in perfect position after Grant forced it out of the arms of the quarters. Here is Grant over the right side lowers his shoulder and bangs into James Butler a seven yard carry. So this has been really bizarre. I mean when you go back and you look at the touchdowns that have been scored. You know the penalties that kept the Giants drive alive and then. You know you have the other penalties that that allowed the Packers to get down there and then this when you think you've got an interception only to lay it on the ground and, and allow the Packers to keep keep the ball and then now be in a position to at least come away with a field goal attempt third down and three. Trying to set up a screen and what a play out there by Webster. Ryan Grant made the catch and immediately went down as Webster went right through Donald Lee out there blocking. Yeah and this was a screen the entire way. I mean you're going to see there Donald Lee's coming out trying to block. They want to get the ball to Grant but Webster read it. Good defensive play. Troy that's a loss of seven and on a cold blustery night. It certainly doesn't help the case of Mason Crosby who's one for one. And trying to pound it through and tie this game. We hit from 36. This is a 37 yard try. And the rookie hits it. 20 20 is the score with 11 46 remaining. And now Dominic Hickson, who's been a nice addition for the Giants returning kicks, to try to set up New York with good field position. Just inside the five. Hickson gets to the edge and out to the 40. First play, a throw from Manning. And the pass is completed to Amani Toomer. Dropped to the ground by Woodson after a gain of five. Our producer is Richie Zayas, our director, Artie Kemner, down in that warm truck. Buck Aikman, Myers. Pam Oliver along with a great crew and Archie Manning <laughs> he's having a hard time even watching this one second and five as Eli tries to get the Giants into the Super Bowl. Ahmad Bradshaw has made a difference. He's two yards shy of a first down before that carry Jacobs averaging three point one yards per carry Bradshaw five point three so they stick with Bradshaw. And looks like Seibert is having a tough time getting up. Trying to work on the right leg of Seibert on the sideline. Greg Rugemer has taken his spot. Gray's in at the guard position as Manning rolls out on third down, throws, and the pass is caught by Plexico Burris. Along the sideline and able to get his feet down a 14 yard completion and what a day as it continues for Plexico Burris. I mean, a really nice job by Eli Manning getting outside the pocket and just putting the ball perfectly along that sideline and I mean he has made some great throws in this ball game here today in bad conditions. I mean to be able to put it where he is is pretty impressive. Here's Bradshaw getting to the edge. On first down Nick Collins knocks him out after a six yard run. I mean you come into this game Joe and you and you know in the last three games that he has played Eli Manning he's you know the weather's been pretty conducive to to throw the football effectively and and the knock on Eli was that he's not thrown the ball particularly well when the weather has been poor and yet today I mean he's throwing it great he's throwing the ball with great accuracy and precision keeping drives alive. Been very impressive what he's done so far. Nick Collins, who made that last tackle, is having a tough time getting back to his feet. He's along the Giants sideline. Those two go helmet to helmet. And on this cold night, a piece of that red stripe, a piece of the helmet broke off. 
Second down and four for the Giants. That's Al Harris on the bench. Collins came over moments ago. Tie game, 10 minutes left. Tremont Williams takes Harris's spot. Rouse takes the spot vacated by Collins. Ahmad Bradshaw left side, and he is swallowed up by Corey Williams. Third down coming up. Let's go down to the sideline and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe Rich Seibert has gone into the Giants locker room for further evaluation. The good news was he was able to run off the field on his own power. They're saying he has a knee sprain. They're going to try to tape him up, get him off, all taken care of, and get him back on the field soon. Back to you. All right, as I mentioned, Gray Rugemer, who used to play with Green Bay, is taken over at left guard. It's third and five. That's him, 65, right there. Manning trying to change the play and has to use the Giants second time out which is important in a game like this nine minutes left 2020 is the score and Manning had the play clock expiring on him. Well, there's no question and he sees something here and he wants to try to point it out direct the offensive line in protection and then at the last minute he decides he wants to change the play. So he's trying to get that communicated. Meanwhile, the play clock is going down. You actually see it right here, the play clock, and that's what he's contending with. And you're right, Joe. I mean, to burn a timeout, you know, in the fourth quarter of a ball game like this, tie tie. I mean, that's uh those those are timeouts that you're probably going to need when you come down the stretch. It also gave a little more time for Al Harris to get back out onto the field. For a big third and five. Giants are on the edge at best of field goal range. The Tines on this cold night, probably outside of it. Manning out of the shotgun. Throws and off the arms of Toomer, and a flag comes down. From the secondary, a flag is thrown. And it's offensive interference. If they decline the penalty, Green Bay, it's fourth down. Pass interference, offense, number 81. Ten yard penalty, third down. But I would imagine the Giants at this point on the field with this kind of a night might go for it on fourth and five, so they accept the penalty. The Packers do and it moves the ball all the way back to the 43 and now Nick Collins is back on the field for Green Bay so Harris and Collins are back out there third and 15. A blitz from the Packers. Bradshaw on a screen gets away, but cannot pick up the first down. He picks up 10, and it's fourth down. Yeah, now they've got a decision to make. I mean, it was remarkable that he even was able to get 10 yards. They had him bottled up, but he was able to get free. And now you're right in that range there to where, you know, right now they're going for it. Yeah, we. I had said the last time around they accepted that penalty because the Giants would probably go for it, which they are on fourth and five, and just inside the 34. A pass on a 52 yard field goal attempt. A blitz. Manning throws, and the pass broken up, and they're going to throw a flag. Pass interference is the call, and Woodson was the one out there in coverage. It went off Amani Toomer into the arms of Smith. Defense number 21. Automatic first down. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down, so another penalty against this Green Bay defense. Well, I tell you what, Amani Toomer and, and Woodson going at it, and 
You know, there's the contact there that they called. It looked like he turned him with his left arm. And it's okay to have your arm on him, but once you turn him, that, that is a penalty. Once it went off Toomer into the arms of Smith, Smith was still short of the first down. With the penalty, an automatic first down. Play action from Manning, who goes for Burris, and it's broken up by Al Harris. And it certainly looked like Al Harris was content to knock it down instead of trying to come away with an interception and he comes up either cramping or with some sort of injury. Yeah whatever it was he had on the sidelines earlier it's bothering him again and you know if he had been able to lay that ball up a little bit more and you're right Al Harris looked like he was content just knocking that ball down. I mean he could have intercepted it very easily. Bradshaw over the right side to the 25 as we check in with Chris Myers. John the Packer bench it, it is cramps for Al Harris. It was the same for Nick Collins and it was something the Packers went through last week and you, you wouldn't think you can dehydrate in this kind of climate but they've been reminded to drink a lot of fluids. He tried to go back out but he's limping in severe pain so they're going to try to rub it down and get him back in the game. They keep him on the sideline on third and seven. Giants are inside field goal range for times. Seven minutes to play. And now Green Bay has to use a timeout. Charge timeout. Green Bay, 30 second timeout. Third down and seven, the ball at the 25. There's the matchup with Toomer and Harris. The pass is behind Smith. Now it's fourth down, and Tynes comes onto the field. He's two for two. But this is no easy field goal on a night like this. A 43 yard attempt coming from Lawrence Tynes in his first year with the Giants. Yeah, and that was one of the first really poor throws that we've seen out of Eli Manning tonight. Manning with a quarterback rating over 100 in the second half. Alford snaps it. Fiegels gets it down. The kick, no good. And so now the Green Bay Packers will take over with the ball at their own 33 in a tie game. It looked like the snap was good, the hold was good, and he just just pulled it left. So now what does Brett Favre have in store for this packed house? Lambeau Field that's been sold out since 1960. Far over the middle, the pass is low and incomplete for Greg Jennings. I'll tell you, this offensive line for Green Bay has has really done a good job. You know of protecting Brett Favre. You know they've given him some time to throw. He's been able to make some plays. Had a chance there actually. The ball just got away from him a little bit. Second but you know, it's not an easy task for this group up front. You know trying to slow down this pass rush for the Giants. You know you think back to last week. The Cowboys did a good job for much of that game. And then once they got into the fourth quarter. Michael Strahan O.C. Manure, they started doing a good job themselves of getting to Tony Romo. That's what they're going to need to do here. On second and ten, Favre throws high and almost a one-handed catch by Jennings. And Favre ends up on his back, and Eumannura put him there. Yeah, Eumannura, it looked like he took an inside move right there, and he came up right into the face of Brett Favre just as Brett was letting the ball go. And then on the other end of that, I mean, it looked like he might have been able to make a circus catch there, but that was... 
That was a tough catch for Jennings to try to reel in. So after taking over. After the miss by Tynes, the Packers have yet to advance the ball third and ten. Over the middle, Morenci. He's short of a first down. It's fourth down, and the ball just shy of the 40, but the 39 and a half. And John Ryan, the punter, and the punt team comes on the field for Green Bay. Another good job by this Giants defense. Well, an outstanding job by them, and and they did it there with just a four-man rush, and to be able to come up and make a tackle, you know, with their linebackers and force a three and out. An outstanding job on their part. Ugly punt. McCorders gets it on a bounce. And the Giants will start at their own 37. A six yard return after a 29 yard punt by John Ryan. Temperature is down to four below zero. Wind chill at minus 24. With 5.53 left. Our game summary. Eli Manning still has not turned it over this postseason. 18 of 34, 225 yards. Burris, the big night for the Giants. 11 catches, far of 217 yards. 90 of those yards and 90 of drivers coming on a touchdown in the first half. There have been four lead changes. Now we're tied at 20. Brandon Jacobs is back in the game and Jacobs falls forward out to the 42 again of five Corey Williams on the tackle. Well they've gone with Ahmad Bradshaw in the last couple of possessions and now they they come back in with their big bruiser Brandon Jacobs and see if maybe the change of pace can do him some good and that was a good place to start you know to be able to pick up five yards there on first down. Quick snap Jacobs avoids some tacklers in the backfield and falls forward dropped right at the first down marker. Aaron Campman with the stop for Green Bay and as the clock goes under it was about to but they're going to stop the clock and call the chains out for a measurement it will be under five minutes to go. And it's O'Hara who comes away limping Sean who missed the first postseason game. With a sprained left knee, comes up Gimpy after that last run by Jacobs, which was inches short of a first down. I was going to say the clock's running here. It's going to be wound by Terry McCauley. Each team with only one timeout left. You may be looking at one more possession each way. Well, I think the way that the Giants are looking at this, I mean, clearly they'd like to get down there and score points, however that happens. But ideally for them, they would love to be able to run the football and take time off the clock and get down there and get themselves in a position, whether that's a field goal or a touchdown, and then just not leave Green Bay with much time, if any at all. But, you know, right now they're faced with third down. Manning keeps it. And as always, it depends on the spot. McCauley from behind the play is already signaling first down. He came walking in and said first down right away, and so that's what it is with 440 remaining. And the ball just on the giant side of midfield. And I think it'll be interesting here, Joe, to see how far they take the play clock down before they snap the ball. Sometimes in an attempt to try to take time off the clock, you tend to then lose your rhythm a little bit as an offensive unit. I think right now they just need to focus on doing what they got to do to get themselves in a position to score. Manning trying to swing it out to Jacobs incomplete. Ryan Pickett was out there defensively for Green Bay. Prior to this game you should know they had a moment of silence. Here at Lambeau Field for the late Georgia Frontieri, longtime owner of the now St. Louis Rams, who passed away this week. 
Giants got the first points of the night. We've gone back and forth now tied at 20 second and 10. Brandon Jacobs over the left side and a good play by Bigby to trip him up after a gain of one. Papinga was out there as well but Bigby took Jacobs legs out and we're under four to play. Yeah it's a good job by Bigby coming up in run support and being able to get him to the ground. Now obviously a big play in the game here. Tynes was trying to do that his last time. That's Lawrence Tynes in the jacket, the parka, third and nine. Pressure from Kabir Baja Biamila and a sack back at the 45. Hey, Kabir Baja Biamila gets to him. It was close. It looked like he might have got a little bit of a head start on that one. You know, he was coming off the offense's left side. I mean, Eli Manning really had no chance. Dave Deal had no chance. Well, you're right. He was awfully close to coming across early and offside if he didn't. But he blew right past Deal. Now Fiegels hits a decent punt. And a juggle somehow. Tremont Williams hangs on to the football. An anxious moment as he was trying to haul it in and Tyree downfield made the play for the Giants after a 38 yard punt. Go back to that sack by Kabir Baja Biamila. Yeah, let's see if he was leaving a little bit early. He's clearly leaving, but it's hard to tell whether or not he had broken the plane of the neutral zone prior to the ball being snapped. I know that Eli Manning, after he got sacked, was immediately looking to see if there was a flag. And I know the Giants sidelines was looking for a flag as well. So now the ball in the Green Bay 17, 248 left, one timeout. For each side. Favre trying to drop it off for Ryan Grant and still unable to set up a screen are these Packers at second and ten. Yeah I think Favre had to get rid of that one a little bit sooner than what he wanted. You know Tauscher's been doing a pretty good job and this time you know that's the move there that Strahan likes to use. He'll use quickness. But then he'll also use the bull rush. He's got great strength and power for a guy who's also as quick as he is coming around the edge. He's been such a difference in both of the playoff wins that they've had. Movement by Clifton, the left tackle. Ball start. Offense. Number 76. Five yard penalty. Second down. So that's Chad Clifton. It makes it second down and 15. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, Steve Spagnola is not afraid to bring pressure, even if it means playing one on one, maybe exposing his secondary a little bit. We've seen it time after time in these situations when he'll bring secondary blitzes. Second down and 15. Favre steps up, throws low, and the pass incomplete. Donald Lee, the intended receiver, and in what is now a battle of field position, the Green Bay Packers have third down and 15, and they're just trying to get a little more breathing room so that they're if they're forced to punt, they don't give the Giants a ball around midfield or even worse. That's exactly right, Joe. I mean, third and 15 is is hard to convert. If they can add anything more to the to field position to make it a little bit easier on their own defense, I mean, clearly that's what they'd like to do if they're unable to convert this. Just a four man rush. Far goes underneath. That's Donald Lee. And Lee gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And a timeout is taken by Tom Coughlin, who ran out all the way onto the field to get in the ear of the official to call the timeout. 
And with two and a half minutes to play, the Giants are out of timeouts. And here is this opportunity for Eli Manning. Should end up with terrific field position at the end of this exchange. And it's all going to be sitting there for the New York Giants trying to march down and get points and get into the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to give the Giants defensively credit for the job that they did right there. And then, as you said, I mean, now Eli and, and as well as he has played here over the last three weeks, the last two weeks in particular, and you know, knowing that here you are two and a half minutes away from trying to go down the field and come away with a score and then, uh, you know, be on your way to Arizona for for the Super Bowl. I mean, that's that's what's at stake right here. Ugly punt by Ryan McCorders hauls it in on the Green Bay side of the 50 loses the football. Still loose. A couple of Packers had a chance at the ball, but the Giants are back on top of it. Giants football inside Packer territory, and two Green Bay Packers had a chance to pick it up. Let's see who gets off the ground with the football. McCorders had it knocked away right there. And you're right. I mean, you're right, Joe. There were two opportunities. There's one. That's Jared Bush, a backup defensive back, and then Papinga whiffed on it. And they're going to mark the ball as Dominic Hickson came out of there with the football, number 87. The ball is marked at the Green Bay 48. I mean, and for Dominic Hickson to be the guy who ultimately recovers that fumble, I mean, think back to the contributions that he has made. You know he had that return against New England for a touchdown but then last week he set up the the touchdown before the half to tie the ball game up and none of those returns were as big as the recovery that he just made late substitutions for Green Bay defensively as the handoff is to Bradshaw Ahmad Bradshaw with a penalty flag in the middle of this play Bradshaw breaks loose for the touchdown but this one it appears is coming back and it is. It's a hold against the Giants. I believe Terry McCauley said 76. Chris Snee guilty of a hold. Well, and what usually happens is on some of these holds on on runs like that, they're not even really necessary because they're beyond. I mean, there's there's Chris Snee right there. Hard to tell exactly where his left hand was. He's the right guard. He had a hold of the jersey of Ryan Pickett. And that moves the ball back to the 42 yard line of the Giants. Now they move it up to the 43, and it's first and 20. Pressure on Manning Tyree makes the catch and then he is put to the ground by Charles Woodson. Lawrence Tynes his season long. The made field goal 48 yards which is 23 yards from this spot the 30 yard line that's where they have to get it and the pass is complete to Smith for diving catch by Steve Smith on a rocket thrown by Eli Manning and what great protection up front and Steve Smith does a good job of beating his man to the inside that's where Eli Manning had to go with the ball that was a weakness in the coverage just great execution. It looked like Smith had possession of it as he went to the ground they are talking about the spot of the football. Now they're going to measure. The ball was moving a little after it got into the arms of Steve Smith. And if there is a review, it has to come from the booth as you look at this diving catch, able to cradle it in his right arm. And it's enough for a first down for the Giants. But right now, New York is still outside field goal range for times. First and 10 from the 38. And Archie still can't watch. 
<laughs> this is this is painful for him. Under a minute and a half to play, and now we have whistles as we could have a review. I thought they might take a look at that catch by Smith, which they will in a booth review and then down on the field under the hood. Well, he got he has the ball, and then it's just a matter of where it is when he's touched, and yeah, I mean. And I think that's a little bit of the inexperience of, of Steve Smith. I mean, knowing that he wasn't touched in college, obviously you're down as soon as you hit the ground. But, you know, I think that had he have known, he would have been a little bit more urgent in terms of trying to pick up that first down. Yeah, but obviously they can look at all aspects of this catch. Not only where it was marked down, but if in fact he secured the catch as he went to the ground. Yeah, it looked to me like it it looked to me like he had secured the catch. Let's take a look at it and see you know there he has it now does he have it as he goes to the ground and is it loose. I, I don't know that it, you know it looks like his arms under there from that angle anyway you don't see the ball moving. I think that they're going to rule that it was a completion and look then, at this angle. Here's a different look at it from here. And I think it's hard to determine. His right hand is under the ball. I, I think that what's going to happen, Joe, is it's going to be more of a review as far as where he was marked down. And, but although you're right, I mean, the whole play obviously is under review. Well, there's no doubt that ball was moving. After you, After you the ball will be placed at the 38 and a half. It will be third and a third half a yard. So they do take the first down away. It is third down. They do grant the catch to Steve Smith. And now third down and one. There's no doubt that ball was moving, but in Terry McCauley's opinion, the right arm was underneath as Smith secured the grab. And now third down and one with the clock running. Bradshaw gets it. Ahmad Bradshaw, the rookie, has a first down for the Giants. And now they're on the outer edge of field goal range for Lawrence Tynes, an eight-yard run by Bradshaw. And A.J. Hawk had a chance at him. I mean, that's that's just Ahmad Bradshaw right there. You've got a you've got a free tackler right there in the hole, and Ahmad Bradshaw makes him miss. Under a minute to play as Manning throws, and the pass complete to Smith. Steve Smith the rookie with another big catch 10 yards plus a first down and Archie can pull his head up watch take a deep breath as the ball is at the Green Bay 21. Hand off to Bradshaw inside the 20 pick it on the tackle a gain of three. Remember the Giants are out of timeouts. And Eli Manning will stop the clock and give Tynes a chance with four seconds and remaining. And Lawrence can send the Giants into the Super Bowl. Yeah, that look wasn't exactly one of those pats on the rear end, and hey, we'll get him next time, and, and we'll see how he does here. Play clock winding down, 36 yard try, and now timeout is taken by Green Bay. Eli Manning has put his team in a position to win it. And here are the three main players. A rookie snapping it, Jay Alford. They miss Ryan Keel, who was lost in August. Fiegels will place it. High snap, Fiegels gets it down and it's hooked. And we are going to overtime. Ryan Keel was the long snapper for the Giants. He was injured, put on IR in August. So the rookie, Jay Alford, who has struggled at times snapping on kicks, snapped it high, it threw the timing off. Fiegels did what he could, but that one is pull 
hook to the left a 36 yard try no good and we're going to overtime. Yeah and I mean Jeff Eagles did a remarkable job of even being able to to grab that one and get it down. I don't even know how he was able to do that and you know how much of that threw off Lawrence Tynes and his ability to keep his pacing to kick that one but. You know you get in that position and you're not able to put it through you saw the expression there by Eli Manning he did all that he could. So listen well, to Terry time, gentlemen. It's a new game. First team score a win. This team has three timeouts. All replays will be from upstairs. Same coin. Heads, tails. New York should call it off. Tails. It's called tails. It's heads. Anybody want to talk? We will take a break after we give you the rules of overtime. We've already had the coin toss. 15 minute quarters, first team to score wins. The replays and the challenges are initiated from the booth and three timeouts per team. We have lost three degrees since we started at 542 local time. Four degrees below zero. Wind chill minus 24 and Green Bay will start the overtime with the football. I think after that miss though Joe this crowd here they heated it up a little bit while we went to commercial and we'll see how Steve Spagnolo, the defensive coordinator for the Giants plays it and if Green Bay can move the ball at all as Corin Robinson takes it. Corin Robinson out across the 25. Does Spagnuolo stay aggressive? How's he going to play it defensively? And can Favre figure out how to move the ball? Running game has been a non-factor for Green Bay. And Ryan Grant carries for two yards over the left side. You know, Green Bay offensively, you know, over the last couple of possessions in regulation, really didn't do too much with it. But, you know, when you get into overtime, it changes a little bit because now you're able, you know, you don't feel the urgency so much of battling the clock. I mean now all of a sudden it, you approach it much like what you would early in a ball game and you're able to execute and do the things that you do well and then just know that you got to get in a position to try to come away with some points and you know Justin Tuck looks to be down here and he's going to get up but that would be a huge blow if he's not able to play. I mean he's such a force there in the middle. One time one play is all it takes and if you blow coverage I mean the game's over. Second and eight. Packers with only 88 yards in the second half. A blitz coming from the Giants. Favre looking for driver and it's picked off. Intercepted by Webster. Corey Webster with the interception. He has taken over at cornerback for the Giants. Benched after starting the first three games. And here he is with the biggest interception in his life. Well, I tell you what, Spagnola brings linebacker blitzes. They come and they block it up pretty good. I mean, you can see the protection that Favre has. The ball just is inside. I mean, that ball's got to be laid to the outside. You don't know how much of, you know, was it a ball that just slipped out of his hand? Was it something that he wasn't expecting from Donald Driver? Whatever it was, Corey Webster jumps it. You know the guy who got benched in the middle of the season comes on strong here over the last three weeks. Second interception of this postseason is Bradshaw the rookie carries it to the 30. So Webster getting congratulations. And the guy who for a short time wasn't even active and the only contribution he was making was on special teams but once Sam Madison went down Webster was installed as the starter again and has played outstanding football this postseason boy well, sure has and, and now for the Giants I mean I, I, I think they got to try to move this football I mean we've already seen Lawrence Tynes has missed the last two field goal attempts there's nothing certain no matter how close they might get another run by Bradshaw he gets it to the 30. And now just shy of the 29 picked up a yard and a half and it is third down and 
they're back in that range here where they have been where Tynes has not been able to connect. I, I just think you, you have to throw the ball here and, and convert the third down. And I mean I've got to believe that based on what's happened if Lawrence Tynes is asked to come out here and attempt a field goal from this spot. He's not going to be doing it with a great deal of confidence. This crowd is stunned. Trying to make noise on third and five. Out of the shotgun Manning throws and Bush made the play tipped it away from Steve Smith and now here we are again third time for Lawrence times. You know this was where they needed to go with the football and, and a, just a pretty good job there by Bush in coverage and Eli Manning had to throw it outside. You know the last thing you can do is afford to put the ball where it could possibly be intercepted. And here we are again 47 yard try his longest attempt of the game he has missed his last two. Can he send the Giants to the Super Bowl the kick is good and the Giants are going to the Super Bowl. This time a better snap the hold was perfect and this one drew in beautifully for Lawrence Tynes good from 47. His third field goal of the night having to deal with the temperature with the wind and it drew right down the middle in the end for the Giants and off they go to Arizona to take on the Patriots in Super Bowl 42.